You know what I'm thinking, B1? I think I am, B2. It's podcast time. time! This is a nightmare. Monsters. clowning around and learning how not to kill the party unless of course you bury the bodies under your house oh well that's what this week's killer did you know who we're talking about and if you don't we're well, gonna tell, tell you the one and only john, john wayne, wayne gacy, gacy also known as pogo the clown or patches the clown mm. he was a little bit Odd, this one. Very odd. But before we do continue, we're going to say that if if murder and assault and abuse of young children are triggering or hard for you to listen to, please turn off now. This is your official warning. 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 <laughs> so John Wayne Gacy has been become one of the most notorious serial killers of all time. I think most people who have an interest in serial killer, he was one of the first ones they probably looked up. Probably one of. And he appears in, he's mentioned in a lot of crime shows where they talk about killers of children and young adults. Or homosexual related ones. Yeah. Um... He, as a character, also appeared in American Horror Story. So it's kind of a thing that stays relevant in, I guess, media. And back then, and for a long time, anyone who did anything homosexualized was a big no-no killer. Yeah. And considering Gacy's age... He'd only be in his 80s now, mm-hmm. so he wouldn't, if he was still alive, that would be quite scary if you were to think about. Yeah. If and he lived in another country that didn't have corporal punishments. Mm. And he, he got away with it for so long uh, and had quite an extensive list of victims. So if you want to know how John Lane Gacy became notorious as the killer clown, and murdered 33 young men. Yeah. Then keep listening, because you're going to learn something new, maybe something you don't know, maybe you just want to hear us talk, why, I don't know. But enjoy. And stay tuned for more information. So John Wayne Gacy was born on the 17th of March in 1942, the middle child to an older and a younger sister. And he was born in Chicago, Illinois. Now, Gacy, like a lot of serial killers, came from a disrupted, abusive household. His dad was a drunk alcoholic who used to physically beat him. Mm -hmm. And his name was John Wayne Gacy Sr. Mm. And he was from Poland. What a way. And basically, John Wayne Gacy Jr., He wanted to be that all-American boy, handsome, athletic, muscular, intelligent. But Gacy turned out to be the opposite. Gacy ended up being a fat, ugly, weak, sickly, and not very intelligent man. 
And his father used to beat him a lot. Yeah. And his mother. Felt, yeah, and used to beat on his mother as well. Yeah. And Gacy used to do more things with his mother than he did with his father, which angered him more, so he would abuse Gacy a lot more. But what was interesting is that Gacy was very upset when his father died. Yeah. And his father's last words to him were, I do love you and I'm proud of you. This was before they found out he was a murderer. Yes. So. Or secretly do you think he knew and was proud of him for being a murderer? A homosexual though? Oh, uh, well. They leave that out in the... Yeah. Well, his dad used to call him a sissy, mama's boy, queer and... A patsy. A patsy. A patsy. Like... I think that's one of the weirdest ones I've heard him be called. I've never heard that as a uh, a slang or derogatory word. I have that. Oh, they were they were a bit of a patsy. I like they like were a side, yeah, yeah, but not a like a um, direct insult. Yeah, you know, Gacy used to steal his mum's underwear. <laughs> Given the 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 colours of the context, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, he used to steal his mum's underwear, and he got caught by his dad. Busted, busted. And his dad hit him and broke a broom oh, on his head and knocked him unconscious. Relatable. And he was molested by his dad's father. Uh, his dad's His father. dad's friend. His dad's friend, yeah. yeah. I think he was seven at the time. And he said it happened in a truck in a few times. And then at school, Gacy got knocked out by a swing. This poor kid, and this is why he wasn't the brightest. He had head injuries, which a lot of serial killers seem to have head injuries. So if you had a head injury, were you secretly a serial killer? You can tell us. We won't do an episode about you. Wink. Wink. (laughs) And you know, when Gacy was having blackouts because he had the blood, the hematoma yep. in his brain, his dad used to accuse him of faking it. Oh, wow. That sound familiar to you? Mm. We're going to draw a lot of parallels to Lucy. <laughs> I mean, so far, I don't know if you saw your mum's underwear. I never stole my mother's underwear. She says with a twinkle in her eye. <laughs> well, I mean, now I dress in ladies' clothing, <laughs> but... Were you molested by your dad's friend? No. Well, so far, that's one cross. Um. <laughs> but Gacy was a hard-working child. He was always trying to appease everyone. And when he was 18, he joined the local Democratic Party. And his father was a hardcore Republican. So, to put it in context, in America at the moment, Trump is a Republican, Biden is a Democrat. Just to make it easy for some of you who are... The good guys and the bad guys. Yeah. And his father bought him a car. Did you see that? Anyway, so when he was 18, his father bought him a car. Yes. But the thing was, he was... Gacy was not allowed to use a car as punishment and his dad was confiscated the keys, which was almost all the time. Okay. So Gacy, when they had a second set of keys cut when he was 20, and his dad got so angry, he took the distributor cap off the car. The distributor cap is what's used to create the ignition to create the spark. I'm glad you explained that because I'm not mechanically minded. I know. So basically, he wouldn't be able to start the car, even though he had second keys. So as soon as the car got fixed, Gacy ran off. Gacy went to Vegas, the city of sin. The city of sin, and Lord, did he make a lot of it. He did. Well, he got a job there working in a mortuary as a mortician's assistant. Oh, that's like your dream job. Well, not the assistant part. Yeah, I wanted to do it for a long time. But I might look at doing it again. I don't know. But anyway, he would sleep at the mortuary in a cot in a back room. In a cot? Like a port- transportable bed. Oh, okay, yes. Like that kind of cot, <laughs> not like a baby cot. <laughs> I thought you meant like a baby cot. I mean, with him, 
It wouldn't have surprised me. Probably. But, yeah, he used to sleep in the cot, and he would assist, like, the mortician, do, like, the embalming of the body, so draining all the blood out, filling up with the embalming fluid, cleaning it up, and things like that. Because he slept there, one night, there was a body of a 17-year-old boy yep. in a casket, and Gacy went and spooned with it. Oh. And we fondled it. So he had a little bit of a initial necrophilia. Necrophilic, yeah. And that's the first, other than being molested, first homosexual thing that he did. And I mean, not it wasn't consensual homosexual sex. Yeah. He never said whether he had sex or not with it, but he said that he fondled and yeah, did other things. things. So we don't know. But the next day, Gacy was so appalled with himself. He was disgusted. Internalized homophobia. It's not just the homophobia, I think, because he did well, something also, with a yes. dead body. The necrophilia <laughs> is more disgusting okay. than the homophobia. Yes, I mean, this is true. This I mean, it's the 1960s, yes, home, homosexual things are, ew, yucky. Ew, homo what? Exactly. But I think the necrophilia disgusted him more, that he... Did things with a corpse. Oh, this is true. So he rung his mother and said, Mommy, can I come home? <laughs> and she said, Yes, yes, of course you can. So he came home and he was alive back there. So when he got home, he started doing after, like, what do they call it? Night, night classes over there. And he graduated high school and got diplomas. And things. Awesome. Then he enrolled in business school, and he graduated. When he graduated from business school, he got a job as a salesman in Springfield, Illinois. Mm-hmm. So he moved there, and no, he didn't go yellow like the Simpsons. He didn't go, Dop! <laughs> He just went there and sold crap. And that's where he met his first wife, Marilyn Myers. I honestly thought you were about to say Marilyn Monroe. I'm like, how have I not heard this before? Mm, maybe. <laughs> I mean, Myers, though. <clears throat> yeah. Mm, convenient last name. Look, Gacy is not an attractive man, and when you see photos of Marilyn Myers, I've put some on Instagram, she was quite attractive. He must so, have been good. Yeah, he must have had either some form of suave and charm, or had a big ding-a-ling. <laughs> Ding-dong! My ding-a-ling, my ding-a-ling, why would you play with my ding-a-ling? Well, she did, so... They did, because they got kids out of it. Oh, <laughs> that's right. They had two kids? I think they had two kids together, and then he had two more. Yeah, they had a son and a daughter, that's right. Yeah. Jeez. And then that same... During that same time period, he joined, like, the local JCs. And I had no idea what the JCs were. Please I, explain. What are the JCs? Patronizing slut. <laughs> the JCs is a non-for-profit organization that encourages young persons 18 to 40 to become active and desirable members of their community through goodwill and social understanding. They were also an extremely bigoted and racist organization that still exists today that doesn't allow black people in and the Supreme Court of America still allows them to have that rule. Well, that sounds like A, baloney, B, he really didn't read the fine print. Yeah. Yeah. They were very big at Wow. Well, and they're still they running are. today. Wow. Get it together. What letters were they? The JCs. Get it together, JCs. And what was interesting, another colleague from the JCs, apparently they got drunk together, and they gave each other mutual head. Oh. So, we're oh. up to homosexual experience number two, that we're aware of. That we're aware of. That he knew how to give a blowjob. Oh. Remember, this is 1960s, free love. Oh, well, free love, embrace it. And he was also known to participate in, as they called it, wacky tobacco. Oh, the marijuana. The marijuana. The marijuana. And then, so yeah, 1964, he started working at KFC. Yes. Because his father-in-law, Marilyn Myers' dad, was very, very rich. 
Oh. And gave him three of his KFC franchises to manage. Oh, wow. So it was very weird. And I think that was in Waterlook, Iowa. Oh, Iowa. And Iowa's one of those very bigoted states still today. Yeah. Wow. And when he was in Water Waterlook, sorry, Waterloo, I didn't say Waterlook. Waterloo. Like the ABBA song. Yeah. Get it together. So he joined the local JCs in Waterloo. And they had swinger parties. So oh. you know, the keys in the bowl. Yeah. And the pampas grass out the front of the houses. <laughs> oh. They would get prostitutes, wow. as they were known back then. Yeah. They would watch porn together, all oh. the men. They would all have drug together and all get drunk. They would all have drug together. You mean do drugs together? Yes, they did <laughs> drugs together. Me, English, good speak. Okay? <laughs> yes, they would do drugs together. <laughs> they would do drugs together. <laughs> <laughs> it, so, he might have had given some mutual hand jobs or watched other men masturbate or something during those times. It's, there's no clear, and because he's dead, we don't. And he would never speak about these kind of things properly, so we don't know. But what we do know is that he used to throw all-male parties for the male teenage employees from his KFC. And he would bring them to, like, his house to let's watch some porn together and things like that. Because apparently that was a big thing in the 60s, that men would sit down and watch stag films together. Oh, like um, all that voyeuristic sort of... With each other yeah, in the room. Weird. Yeah. So he'd do that and he'd make advances on the young boys. Oh dear. And if they didn't follow through, he'd go, Good, it was I was just checking that you have morals and things <gasps> like that. Oh, so he played it off so it was all cool. We all know those pornos are out there. Yeah. Oh, I haven't had a girl in three weeks, man. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, that one. They're oh, all out dear. there. So he was a sex fiend with the swinger parties and things like that. And his wife, Marilyn, was into all the swinger parties too. Oh, wow. So, she was a enabler. Yes. So during this time in 1967, so when he's still married to Myers, running the KFCs and part of the JCs, is when he met Donald Voorhees. A Voorhees now? That's where Voorhees was a reference to... Yeah, yeah. And if you don't know who Voorhees is, I don't know why you're listening to this podcast. Well, so far we've had Myers and Voorhees. Yes. So... Where's Voorhees from? Which one's Voorhees? Voorhees is... Halloween. No, it's not. Oh my god! You put me on the I'm spot! Disappointed. Stop it! Jason, no, yes. Yes. Fucking hey. hell. Come on. You're cutting all this out. No, I'm not. <laughs> Crystal Lakes. Yeah, the on. fucking... What are you wanting? The film name? Yes. Yeah. Come on. This is so Why? entertaining for me to watch. She's like slapping herself in the head and things. It's very entertaining. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> I'm just going to leave the podcast. You can follow Connie on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know it. If literally as Jason Voorhees. Yeah. I'm just having a mind blank. The Friday the thirteenth. Yay! Well, you can edit half of that out. No, I might leave it all. Anyway, so he met Donald Voorhees, who was the son of one of his co workers. Now Gacy was thirty five at this point in time. Yeah. And he basically said, Why don't you come over and watch some porn with me? So he got the kid there and he got him drunk. He said, here, have some beers. Had some beers. Got him drunk. And then persuaded the boy to, like, wait, wait, come here. You see this thing here? I want you to suck it. So the boy did it because Gacy paid him 50 bucks. 1960s 50 bucks. That's equivalent about $200 to not say anything. So the boy kept quiet for a year. And Gacy did this to other boys. 
but he always like told people, "Oh no, he's lying," because he was a respected person in the community. Like, yeah. why would Gacy yeah. lie about things like that? During the same period, he did some scientific research. Oh, he did. So his scientific research was he paid boys to have some homosexual interactions in front of him just to see if homosexual thing was something innate or not. Oh. So he's a self-renowned scientist as well. Well, I mean, he kind of did the bait bus thing. Uh, (laughs) He had some money. Yeah, do it. Wow. And then these boys started saying things, and no one believed. So then Voorhees told his father what happened. So, of course, Gacy went, no, it never happened. No, it didn't. No, 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 no. But in the end, the kid, the father took him to court, and nothing, nothing really happened. He just got fined a little bit of money, basically. And he got, he was indicted on the sodomy, so they pressed the charges of sodomy. So what Gacy did was he paid this 18-year-old kid who worked at the KFC to then go beat up Voorhees. Oh, my God. To keep him quiet. Yeah. So Voorhees got beaten pretty badly, but he got out of it. Then the person, and Gacy wasn't happy with him. He's like, you didn't beat him hard enough. So what I need you to do is poison both him and his dad and the dog. Oh, my gosh. Now, the kid who did... The assault was just like, no, man, no, man, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, because so, that's like murder, you know? Yeah, so then he confessed to the police that Gacy paid him off oh. to do all this. So then Gacy got charged with um, witness intimidation. Oh. So during all this, they decided to get Gacy have like a psychiatric assessment during it yeah. all. And he got diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. So, according to the DSMV-5, for those of you who don't work in healthcare or mental health, that's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, edition number 5, which is what they use to diagnose psychiatric and mental health conditions. So, basically, it's a person with antisocial personality disorder it has a low moral, impulsive and aggressive behaviour, Disregard of others' rights and feelings. A facade of wit, charm, or intimidation and violence. Mm. So, basically, tick, 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 tick. He ticked all these boxes very easily. So then he was charged with sodomy and sentenced to 10 years in jail. And during this time, his wife Marilyn left him because of sodomy. Oh, God. So that's where she drew the line? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, where's your line? Touch little boys, but you can go fuck me and other women. Yeah. Oh. At least she had some morals, though. I guess. She's got I'm something. not I'm not opposed to swingers and that, but for 1960s, I think she had pretty loose She had a lot of loose herself. things. <laughs> well... In prison, get this, get this, he was a model citizen. What? He was a model citizen in prison. He was the head cook for the kitchen. Wow. He saw a pay rise for the prisoners. Oh, wow. And he also saw the construction of a mini golf course in the jail. Wow. He knows what he's doing. Now, his business, his... When he did school, night school, yeah. to graduate high school, that was all falsified. Oh. So this time he really did do high school in jail. Oh. But he made he got the prisoners a mini golf course in the rec yard. Yeah. What kind of prison is that? I mean, I'd go to prison if there was a mini golf. And he did TV interviews during that time as well. Like, on shows, talking about, like, the prison kitchens and things like that. You can find all those on YouTube. It, there's a video of him wearing, the, like, the little chef's hat and things like that. It, oh. Yeah. So, he was granted parole. So, he was charged with the sodomy in 1968. 
and he got out on parole in 1970. Oh. And I remember this was a 10-year sentence. So when he got out, he sexually assaulted more boys during the parole period because he moved back to Illinois from Iowa. Oh. And no one reported it to Iowa. Oh, no. And he is an example of people getting lost through the cracks because no one kept track on him at all. They completely forgot that Gacy existed. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Lucky for him, because like we said in the beginning, he wasn't the brightest person. So, he moved in with his mother, who helped him buy a house. Oh. Because during this time, his father died. Oh. Lucky now, for him, like, in, in that scenario. Yeah. And in the house that he lived in, like that area, he became like, a very active member of the local community. Like, he was doing everything he was doing before and then just everything. Like, so he was part of the JCs again. Oh. He was running the Polish club. He, like, he just became such a person, like, active person in the community. No one questioned anything he was doing. And his neighbours and everything could say how such a lovely person he was and Things like that. Yeah. Now, just remember, this is a man who's just gotten out on parole. Yes. Who got charged in 1968. We're only at 1970 out of a 10-year sentence. Jeez. So he should technically, because he assaulted more boys, should have been back in jail. Straight away, yeah. Yeah. So he got married again to Catherine Hoff. Hoff. Oh. And she was quite attractive as well. So I don't know what this man had going for him. I don't Maybe think he's very he attractive. Maybe very charismatic. Well. <laughs> he could be. So during his time, he started a construction business in 1971 called PDM. PDM. Painting, decorating, and maintenance. Oh, and during this time, he started that up. So during the night, he would work construction and painting. And then during the day, he worked as a cook. Huh. And he eventually, he joined the Moose Club, which is, again, another very racist club that's still running today. Hmm. And it's basically exactly like the JCs. Almost exactly the same thing, except they're called the Moose Club. <sighs> well... All these fun organisations that he's a part of. Yep. And when he was part of the Moose Club, he found out about the Jolly Joker Clown Club. Oh, joyous. And basically, they were members of the community, men and women, who would perform at fundraising events, kids party, and go visit sick kids in hospital. Mm. And he joined them in 1975, and he had two alter egos. Pogo? And Patches. Oh. Why did he have two? So, he said that Pogo was the more happier clown, and Patches was the more serious one. Oh. And at parties and that, he used to, like, go up to women and fondle their breasts and that, oh. and then used to joke to the other men. This is when he was in clown makeup and say, clowns can get away with murder. Oh. This was 1975. So, that... That was that. Now let's go back a couple of years to 1973. Okay. It took a boy that he was working at his company, the PDM Construction, PDM, yeah. to view a property in Florida Okay. that he was purchasing. So he raped the boy. He literally raped him. Yeah. It doesn't say how old the boy is anywhere. So I don't know. It just says boy. Yeah. But he raped him. When they got back to Chicago, the boy in question and his father beat the living shit out of Gacy. Well. In his backyard. Yeah. Gacy's wife was witness to all this. And Gacy said, oh, no, it's just because I didn't pay him probably for shitty whack. Wow. And she believed it, being the good, being the good housewife that she was. Ugh, that pains me to say that. That felt yucky. Yeah. But... She just didn't question it. So let's go back to 1975. And he's with 
a young man called Anthony Antoninucci. Try saying that three times fast. Anthony Antoninucci. Anthony Antoninucci. Anthony Antoninucci. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, basically, he did the old, let's go watch some porn together. Oh, the classic. He, but, he did uh, it again. And they drank two bottles of wine oh, between them. Okay. He then showed the boy a magic trick. And he would go on and use this same magic trick, basically, on lots of other people. So, he handcuffed the boy. Mm-hmm. But the guy was able to remove the handcuffs. Okay. So I think there must have been a little bit dodgy handcuffs. Anyway, he got out of the handcuffs and he then handcuffed Gacy. Oh. And he said, he basically, like, told Gacy, give me money, and that's the end of this. Yeah. And Gacy agreed with it. And Gacy went on to say, not only are you the only one who got out of the cuffs, you got them on me. Yeah. That's a little bit foreboding. Yeah. Because how many times did he, he use those handcuffs beforehand? How yeah, how many before this point yeah. had there been? Well, when we speak about the murders, we'll do it in a very chronological order, but these here are just some interesting things that happened with Gacy. So during this time, in nineteen seventy five, Gacy had a housemate move in. Because I don't know if his mother died before that, because there's nothing really anything about it. Yeah. So Gacy had a guy called Cram moved in, and his name was David Cram. He moved in in 1976. Wow. Now, Gacy met Cram in June that year because he was a hitchhiker. And he basically picked him up and said, hey, you want to come work for me? And he DM. Yep. So Gacy got him working too. Then in June, so two months later, this random hitchhiker is now moving in with him. Oh. Now, Gacy dresses up as Pogo, the happy clown. The happy clown. We'll put a picture on Instagram of the happy clown. Kind of, I wouldn't say it's happy. I'd say happy like how the Joker looked happy. I, it's scary happy. I mean, I paid myself to look like that. But that's because you're a monster. That is true. Anyway, he dresses up a pogo and he handcuffs Cran okay. and tries to rape him. Cran rolls over and kicks Casey in the face and gets the handcuffs off. How do these people keep getting the handcuffs off? They must be pretty shitty. Mm, either really shitty handcuffs or really talented people. Or very people who can dislocate their thumbs. Oh, like, like me. those people. Yes. So, got him off. Anyway, Fran stays living with him after this. <laughs> Literally after all that, he stays. You would. I am. That's high risk of feeling, but possibly. Anyway, in September... Um, Gacy got into his room again and said to him, Dave, you really don't know who I am. Maybe it would be good if you give me what I want. Wow. So, Cram resisted the rape again and kicked Gacy out of the room. And come October, Cram has moved out and left the company. Okay, yeah. He finally went, okay. One time, no. Two times, no. Yeah. That ain't gonna be a third time. Exactly. Well, I mean, at least he left. Yeah. Well, then another man moved in, Michael Rossi. Oh, Rossi. Who also worked for PDM. Well, what I was reading is that that's how he would get them. He'd offer them a, a high-paying job through PDM or offer them alcohol, drugs, or money yep. for the sex. That's the one. So, let's talk about the murders. Mm. There was a lot, 33 murders. Yeah, that mm. we know of. That we know of. It could be as high as 70. Yeah, there were a lot. Um, And obviously, he's dead now. Yeah. So, it's things that we'll never know. But yeah. 33, 100% confirmed Gazing. murders. Yeah. yeah. And what's interesting is because it was such a 
at the time such a big deal. It was televised, it's on the radio, it was in all the newspapers. So there's so many sources for it. Yeah. And then Gacy admitted to these 33. Yeah. But he said there could be more he can't remember. So exactly. it's very interesting. And when you watch interviews with Gacy's sister yeah. about him, it, it's real. It's unsettling because she, she shows emotion, but it's very crocodile tears for me. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just like, I wonder if she's kind of tainted with the same weirdoness. So... We'll start with 1972. That's when his first murder that he can remember happened. Yeah. So this happened on New Year's Eve. Him and his wife went to a party. Yeah. And they went to a party at Neb's house. Gacy left early because his wife had got too drunk, so he just left her behind. <laughs> wow. Yep. What a good man. So he then went to the Greyhound bus depot and he picked up this boy there called Timothy McCoy, who became famously known as the Greyhound bus boy. So basically he picked up Timothy and gave him like a driving tour of Chicago, showing him the sights, the sounds and all that. They then fucked. Oh. So in the, they fucked, they spooned and on June 3rd is when this kid was killed. Um, so there's two days in there. So how many times did they fuck in that time? Yeah. So he woke up to McCoy standing in the doorway with a knife. Oh, dear. So Gacy gets up, starts beating the shit out of him. Wow. So then basically he start. the kid tries to fight back. He cuts Gacy a little bit. Gacy gets the knife off him. And stabs him in the chest multiple times. Jeez. Gacy then washes the knife in the bathroom. Okay. And then makes his way into the kitchen. And he finds sitting in the kitchen was some eggs cooking and a slab of bacon and a table set for two. The kid was making him breakfast. Oh, dear. That's how well they got together. So... Those two days, they obviously yeah. had a lot of fun together, and the kid knew where, where everything was to set up stuff and cook him breakfast. Yeah. Oh, so dear. Gacy is just like, fuck, what do I do? I've got to get rid of this body. So he puts the body in the crawl space of, under the house. Oh, excellent. But during this time, Gacy realises that he's had an orgasm. Oh. So this is when Gacy's realised killing is what gets me off. Oh dear, yeah. And this same year, him and his wife had sex on Mother's Day that year. And he said, this is the last time we'll be having sex together. And he admitted to her that he was bisexual. Wow. And she was still okay with that. They still lived together. And they still raised their kids together. So she was very... Very accepting woman, very open minded for the time. Then he has a few years rest, which you see a lot of serial killers do that. They'll do a murder. And then they'll go underground for a while. Yeah, and then they'll go, Oh, I miss that feeling and then start doing it and then they get too cocky and then they do it and do it and do it and do it. So Gacy murdered again in nineteen seventy five. Okay. So from what we know, in nineteen seventy five Teens kept reporting to the police that there was this man called John cruising around the young park soliciting young men and that. The police would just ignore it because homosexual yeah. stuff was too much for them to want to deal with. Yeah. Then 1976, a nine-year-old goes disappearing in the same area. Oh, dear. Now, they never tied this to Gacy, but it was highly... Probable because the boy went missing from the same area that the man named John, yeah, John Wayne Gacy, yeah, was cruising. So it's very <sighs> likely that this nine-year-old was one of his victims. Yeah, nineteen seventy-seven. We gonna jump to. He met a man named Rignall. Rignall is the man's last name. Now he offered the man some weed, got him in the car, 
then chloroformed him. Oh dear, do you want the marijuana? Yes, sir. Here, smell this. Does this rag smell like chloroform to you? Shit, so what happened then? What do you think he did? Uh, handcuffed him and forced Fuck. himself upon him. Now, the guy escaped. He had he was battered and bruised. I'll put some photos of that up on Instagram. And Gacy only got charged with battery wow. and a civil suit for fr- and got charged $3,000. It really goes to show the time frame and how far, like, queer rights have come because way back then, if you were a gay man and got beat up, it's... You never got that, beat up. Well, that's on you. Yeah. Like, it didn't happen. Yeah. Or that's your own fault. Like, Same as the sodomy, it's kind of... Yeah, but for... So... Uh, like, Gacy has done this a couple of times. He has raped people. Yeah. And this is still in the same... He's only just ending that parole period now. Yeah. So, really, he should be back in jail at this point if yes. someone was keeping track of what happened. If someone was doing their job properly. But part of it comes down to... At that point, the jurisdictions never used to talk to each other. Um, so that was Iowa's problem. This is Chicago's problem. They wouldn't talk to each other. Yeah. Right. But no one in Iowa noticed that Gacy had disappeared. Yeah, see, someone wasn't doing the, yeah. their job. So in the same year, in 1977, he kidnaps another boy, a 19-year-old boy. So he goes to this park cruising. He flashes a police badge to him. Yep. And basically the boy goes, oh, fuck. Gets in the car, he handcuffs the boy, and drives the boy to his workplace, which is, like, some restaurant place. Yeah. He, the boy, the place is closed, the boy has a set of keys, yeah. makes him unlock it, and goes in there, and at gunpoint sexually assaults the kid. Oh, dear. Now, the kid escaped, and again complained about this. But Gacy said, yes, this all happened, but he was a willing participant. Mm. So, he was not prosecuted. There was no prosecution. So this is three in a span of, what, three years? Yeah. And his... Are they not seeing a pattern? Like, uh, how is he still just, oh, okay, yeah, this is the thing, and that's okay. The next year, Gacy gets a Secret Service clearance. Oh, wow. Because he's meeting the First Lady because he's running, like, a Polish pride parade. Oh, wow. So he got he met the First Lady. There's photos of him in the Chicago Tribune, on TV, everything. Him with the First Lady. He got a Secret Service clearance. They never looked at back at all this stuff, obviously, because he wouldn't have... Yeah, he wouldn't have got a Secret Service clearance. So that is where... Just something wrong. But that same year was Gacy's un. Yes. That's when he got involved with a young boy named Robert Peist. Robert Peist. So, this kid was 15 years old. He was, like, the high school hero, academically well done, very handsome, perfect perfect boy. Like, always did what he was told, everything. So, he was working at the local pharmacy, and his mum comes to pick him up at the end of the shift, and he said... Oh, I've just got to go talk to this guy about a construction job where I'm going to get five dollars a day rather than two dollars fifty. Yeah. Which, again, that was good Big money. money for that time. Yeah. So she went, oh, okay, and he took his parker and went to go meet the guy, and he never came back. His mum waited for him, and he just never returned. She went in and asked the pharmacist. He said, no, he's already left. Yeah. So she went home, got her husband, their other kids, and their two German shepherds. Oh, wow. And they went looking for him and found nothing. So then they go into the police station, and the officer there, Lieutenant Kozenzak, he is basically, his son went to school with him, with Robert. So he went, oh, okay, let's look into this more. So on December 11th, he, that day that Robert went missing, PDM that night had finished decorating. Yeah. So they were looking into that. So he 
it's just like, oh, Cosm Zach's like, okay, maybe we'll speak to the guy because it might have been Gacy. So he rung Gacy, and Gacy said, yeah, 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 I'll be there in half an hour, I'll come talk to you. Gacy didn't come back until 11.30 at night. Oh, wow. No, that was at, sorry, Gacy said he'd be there in 30 minutes, and that was at 11.30 at night. Oh. So he should have been there at midnight. So Cosm Zach waited until 1am, and he just never, never turned up. So during this time, Gacy must have panicked, just gone crap, they're onto me, what do I do? Yeah. So he moved, we don't know what he did to Robert, but we can assume it was the handcuffs the classic, actually sold it, yeah. and then he stabbed him in the chest. So he got his body, took it from the attic, and went and dumped it in the river nearby. I'll put a photo up on Instagram of the map. It was about a 40-minute drive away from the location. So. When Gacy arrives at the police station at 3.20 in the morning, yeah, he said that his car got stuck on the way there. This was confirmed by the tow truck company that said, yes, they had to pull him out of the mud and that at 2 a.m. But what got to the police and that was the location where he was pulled out from wasn't anywhere near. Yeah, he shouldn't be. So, but he got there... Police station is very cooperative, and the police officers as they took the statement and let him go in the morning. Yeah, until morning. So Cosm Zach came back in the morning and went through like all these, went through all these records because he's just like something's not adding up here. And he found like all these cases that involved Gacy being charged with sodomy, and he's just like, oh, what have we got here? So he went and got a search warrant. And called Gacy, and Gacy came back. So Kozniak informed, was trying to like get all this stuff on Gacy as much as he could with the judge, and it's just like you need to hold Gacy there. And the other officers are just like, well, he wants to go because Gacy's just like, I've got things I need to do. So the Gacy called for an attorney. Kozniak got there and presented the. Search warrant to Gacy said, look, we just want to search your house and all that. Gacy put up a bit of a, uh, doesn't want to and that, but reluctantly handed over the keys to the house. So they searched the house. They couldn't find any evidence of Robert. They took everything they could, including a piece of red paper. A little Check piece of under red. the crawl space. <laughs> yeah. So at this time, Cram arrived in the house whilst the police were searching. Yeah. And they're just like... He's just like, oh, user searching, oh, okay, and just do that. So the officers, anyway, keep searching. They remove everything, golf clubs and that, from Gacy's closet. Yeah. And they find a crawl space store. And they looked, they looked in there, and an officer went down there and everything. Didn't find anything at that point. Wow. At that point. So then he was released at 11 p.m. on December the 13th. So on December the 14th, Cosm Zach wasn't happy, so he put him under 24-hour police surveillance. Yeah. December 15th, they found a high school ring in Gacy's house on a second search warrant. Oh. And this was linked to John Sizzik, a boy who's been missing for two years. Oh. During this time, Rossi had informed police that two of Gacy's former employees had gone missing. And Rossi was one of the men who lived with him. Yeah. Graham also said that Gacy had got him to spread lime and things like that under the house, and he just assumed it was for concreting because there was a damp problem under the house. Oh, and Rossi backed this up, saying, yeah, like, Gacy used to get me to dig trenches and put lime down and things like that. Now, lime dissolves human flesh. Yeah. And it also helps to hide smell. That's why they use it in soap making. It helps get through the smell. Makes sense. So on December 17th, Cousin Zach, he was pretty progressive when you think about this. He contacted a local psychic to help look for Robert Peist. Now, the psychic, they gave Robert Peist's camera to the psychic and she stated that he was dead. And then the same time, 
that same day, they, like, got the statements from Rossi and Cram. Yeah. About digging the trenches. On December 19th, the red paper that they found, remember that piece of red paper yeah. I told you about? Turned out to be a receipt for photographs which belonged to a friend who he worked with at the pharmacy. And because it was a cold, windy day, he loaned the jacket to her so that she could then go pick up something from somewhere else. And it was her receipt. And she recalled putting the receipt in the pocket, but not getting it back out. So. Well, it's not looking good for Johnny Boy. (laughs) Johnny Boy? You sound like you were on close terms with him with that. Yeah, well. That same day, Gacy invited officers into the house for breakfast. Oh. And the officers kind of went, this place is, smells disgusting. And Gacy's just like, oh yeah, there's a drainage problem. And in, in that time, when he was under 24 hour surveillance, he got into the crawl space and unplugged the sump pump. So the sump pump, like, pumps water out. So he unplugged that and that allowed the crawl space to flood, which made the smell of decaying odor. So he's kind of like, well, I want them to find me in a way, kind of showboating yeah. that there's something there and you just don't know about it. So, two day, two more days pass, and on December 21st, the police threatened Gacy with tearing up his floor, because they know that Pice is held there under the house against his will. Gacy said, no, he hasn't he hasn't killed the boy, but he did kill another boy Yeah, in the past while it was in self-defense. And he took them to the spot in his garage where the Greyhound bus boy was buried under. Uh. So during that time, the police got another search warrant for the house. Yeah. And they find an ulna and radius in another crawl space access point. And they apply for another warrant. Now, I'm going to put a picture of the crawl space access point on Instagram. I'm a big boy. I could not fit into that crawl space. Could you fit into that crawl space hole? Definitely not. Now, there are a lot of theories out there that Cram and Rossi were involved oh. with these things. Because how is Gacy getting down in that little tiny hole? To put a body down there. Like, he's a big, chunky boy. Yeah, I'm a big, chunky boy, and I don't think I could. Yeah. Not, not with ease, and not and then getting back body. Out, and then getting back out of it. Yeah, no. Into a crawl bad. space. A crawl space is literally a crawl space. Now, imagine trying to dig a trench in that under a crawl space. No. That would have taken a lot of effort. Because <laughs> basically, you couldn't have a shovel in there. No. You'd have to do it with... A trowel, basically. Like a hand spade, yeah. yeah, so then we got December twenty second. It's a long case. So they got another search warrant, and Gacy basically knows it's over. And he confesses everything in a rambling statement that lasts five to ten hours. Now, the sor- every source varies on how long it was. Some say a couple of hours, some say several, some say ten, some say five. Yeah. So he, and during it all, he talks about himself in the third person. Oh, dear. So, you know, John did this, and Jack did that, and John did this. And it was like, where does Jack come from? Yeah. But he would refer to himself as Jack in the third person. Oh. Now I'm going to post another picture on Instagram of he drew a diagram for the police of where all the bodies were hidden under his house. Oh. So the police then get the warrant and they remove the floorboards from the house and they find the bodies. Wow. Now there are 33 bodies under his house. 33. Didn't he throw one in the lake? Well, he threw four in the lake. That's when he drove there. In the river, sorry. The Des Plaines River. He threw four bodies in there. So they must have been fresh kills. Yeah. So you have the 33 boys. So you have Timothy McCoy, who was 18, and he was in 1972. John Butkovich, he was 17, and that was 1975. And he was one of the PDM workers that went missing. Yeah. 
Then you have Daryl Simpson, who is 18, who is also one of the PDM workers, and he went missing in 1976. Also, in 1976, he had a busy year, because he killed Randall Reffitt, who was 15, Sam Stapleton, 14, Michael Bonham, 17, William Carroll, 16, Rick Johnson, 17, Kenneth Parker, 16, and Michael Marino, who was 14. Now, Marino is interesting because the mother maintained that the body that they found did not belong to Marino, even though forensic orthodontists and anthropologists have confirmed it, and she won't give a DNA sample. Why? I would say it's probably because she might feel a bit of shame. She's died now. Yeah. But I'd say she probably felt a bit of shame that her son was a homosexual Uh, or died from a homosexual. You've got to remember this is the 1970s, so very different time for queer people. People never really did well. Then the very last murder of that year was Gregory Godzik. Now remember before how I said they found a class ring? Yes. This belongs to the next one from 1977, John Sizzik. Oh. Now they find they, from here they start finding little trophies of people. Oh, excellent! Like wallets, rings, just little, just little tokens. Trophies, yep. He's pretty wow. that serial killer. So he killed in that year one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boys in that one year. So John Sizzik, he was nineteen. John Prestige, he was 20. Matthew Bowman, 19. Robert Gilroy, 18. John Maori, 19. Russell Nelson, 21. Robert Winch, 16. Tommy Bowling, 20. David Talsma, 19. That's 1977. So, so far, he's up to 20 murders. Jeez. He was a busy boy. Like, that was, that's a lot of people so far, but he just didn't stop. So, 1978, he so kills 1978, more. 1978, he kept going. William Kindred was 19. Timothy O'Rourke was 20, and he was found in the Desert Plains River. Yeah, he was one of the bodies that they, that he drove and threw into the river, because he panicked. Also, there was Frank Len. Landon? I'd say Was Frank he... Landon. Yep, 19. His body was also in the river. His driving, his driver's license was found in Gacy's home. So another one of those tokens. Got to that real serial killer, let's yeah, keep a token. Let's keep a, let's keep a memory of them. Who else? Um, he also found, they also found the body of James Maraza in the river and he was 21. And Robert Pice, as we said, who was 15. Yeah. So it was all pretty clear. Then there were so many bodies that there's... So in 2011, they only just identified one of the skeletal remains as William George Bundy, who was 19. Wow. Through DNA donated by his brother and sister. So... (laughs) That took a long time, from 1978 to 2011, to get Imagine closer. Imagine having to wait that amount of time to know for sure if someone you cared about was or wasn't murdered. Well, the same thing happened with James Hackinson. So he was only identified in 2017 as the body missing, again, through family-related DNA. Wow. But there are still six people who are unidentified. That's scary. So they have the skeletal remains of a Caucasian male. Another skeletal... All his victims are Caucasian. And male. And male. So they found the skeletal remains of six other people, all ranging from as young as 17 to as old as 25. Jeez. And they're still looking for people to identify who they are. Now, we Gacy admitted to how he murdered them all was basically the same thing. He would show them some form of magic trick, either with handcuffs or rope. Yeah. Like, his confession 
went for a long, like, went for a long time, because he gave explicit details on everything, like how he sodomized them, yeah, everything, and it's just, yeah, so, on, and this all happened right on Christmas, it did. That like, did. on Christmas, so on Christmas Day, they didn't do any more body searching, and then they kept doing searching. Now, there are pictures in the Chicago Tribunal, Tribune, Tribune, the Chicago Tribune, which is the local paper, of people waiting and standing outside the house just watching in the freezing snow. Wow. Just to see what happens. Like, when you read the paper. Yeah. Like, wow. And then you got all the court case. There was a whole big thing. Oh, my The God. court case went for so long. I know, like, it went for up to, 19, from 1979 to 1985. Like, that's how long the court case was in the end, with all the appeals and everything. It was just, it was insane. But by April 1979, he got indicted and he had pled not guilty to all of these. Oh By August that same year, they decided, uh, instead of doing each of these trials individually, let's just make them one class action suit. Yeah. And they set that down for the next year, which got delayed until February the following year, so 1980. Oof. So that's when Stranger Things is set. Ooh. So Demogorgon. It was a Demogorgon, not Casey. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could blame the Demogorgon. I mean, no, I guess you wouldn't be. It'd be more Jeffrey Dahmer that would be the Demogorgon. Yeah. Because he ate. This is true. We'll talk about him another day. Oh, for another episode. It's amazing how many serial killers were involved in homosexual things. Or this repressed homosexuality really got to me. Yeah. So, with this court case, it had a couple of landmark things happen. One, they didn't allow anyone under the age of 16 into the courtroom. Makes sense. Because of what happened. It took them quite a while to find a jury, and they had to come from out of state to oh. get people for the jury so that people didn't know Gacy, because people in the community all and knew that's Gacy. The thing, he was a big community man. So everyone was just like, oh no, no. He wouldn't do that. Yeah. So then Gacy tries, of course, for the. Oh, the insanity plea. Oh, uh, and he, it basically takes the jury two hours to come up with a guilty decision. Just two hours, which is pretty quick for them all, on all accounts. So he was sentenced to death, to which there was applause and cheering from the people in the courtroom. Yeah. People were excited for it. And that, again, was another two-hour decision by the jury. Then he gets transferred to death row, and he keeps trying to appeal it every time, every time, and it's just no luck. So his sentence was straight up 12 years, uh, 12 life sentences. Yep. Yep, 12 life sentences. Which... I think they counted a life sentence as like 65 60, or so 60, years. 65 years. So you're looking at about 720 years worth of life sentencing, plus the death penalty over 12 times. Yeah, he's not getting out of that. No, so it's a lot. Because when you can... He was the most notorious killer of the time. Yeah. And he's still one of the most notorious high-number serial killers ever yeah. to be documented. And because it happened at the time that all media and all that was starting to, like, really become a big thing, mm -hmm. it was so well documented across the whole country and internationally. Yeah. Like, and then in 1994 was when he was coming up to death. Yeah, it was sentenced. And he, his time was up on May 10th of yeah. 1994. So not that long ago. Yeah, the year I was born. Yeah. So his time in jail, you know what one of the things he became famous for? He became a famous artist. And wow. you can buy paintings done by Gacy. Wow. 
like, and they're worth a fortune. And there was one guy bought up as many paintings as he could and invited the families of victims to come burn the paintings with him. Wow, that was, like, that was pretty, like, power to the people. Yeah. Like, that was kind of a big deal. When you think of it, that's a lot of therapy. That's, like, a good therapy, like. Yeah. Because he used to do a lot of self-portraits of Pogo. Okay, well, that, yeah, that would feel really, it obviously wouldn't take all of the malice or the pain away, but it will, it's a good therapeutic It'd be a bit cathartic. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, did you read what his final meal was? KFC. And fried shrimp. Yeah. And punted of strawberries. Yeah. And a bottle of Coke. A bottle of Coke. I think <laughs> it's funny that he basically started out with the KFC businesses, and that's what he wanted as his last meal. He was loyal to KFC like, to the end. Like, he was a loyalist right until the mm-hmm. end of KFC. I mean... And, like, I don't know. KFC is so good, but also it's so not good because it's so greasy. I've not had KFC in over 15 years. Yeah, I can't eat it. So I don't don't know. But, um, very greasy and oily, and it was probably different back then, but I mean, lucky they didn't electric chair him or something, because that KFC, I don't know what it would do under the electrodes. (laughs) <laughs> bubbling in his belly. <laughs> uh, it's only very quick. It wouldn't do anything, really. Yeah. But he was killed by the cocktail, by the yeah. lethal injection. But it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. It lasted 18 minutes for him to die. Uh, well, do you know why it didn't work? Because there was a clog in the tube. It precipitated. Lovely. So it had to be recannulated. Then they had to put new tubing on. Re- get all the, like, medications out, which that's a process to do. And then they have to load it into the machine. And then it goes... The three yeah. things go down. And his final words. These would be words you would utter if you're about to be executed. <laughs> Kiss my ass. That is you to a T. The, well... Okay, I would, but also I'm not going around murdering children. Aren't you? And young men, no. So no, Just the adults. <laughs> what what strong last word? What a strong out is that? Kiss my ass. I mean, it's short and sweet. Short and sweet, unlike his... When they show, like, when he was interviewed, there's interviews, like, videos of him being interviewed that shows no remorse. No. Like, nothing. And that's the thing. They, he was formally diagnosed as a psychopath because he had no remorse for any of that. Yeah. Um, but, oh, just, at least he, he went out with his strong opinion and... I mean... He went out with a bang. He did. Like, the killer clown lives up forever. Like, how can you not know that? What would, what do you think my final words would be? I don't know, something in German. Gute Nacht, Zweinhund. Like, what's that line she screams when they burn the witch in American Horror Story? Balenciaga! That, that would be very... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably be burnt at the stake. Yeah, that's how... I'd have people chasing me with the pitchforks. Everyone, let's do a poll. Who wants to see Connie Bathory burned alive? I've lit myself on fire before. Yeah, she's the burning queen. Burning. Burning. I ate the purple berries. <laughs> Tastes like burning. burning. <laughs> uh, that would be you. Yeah. Well, John Wayne ate. John Wayne Gacy ate the red strawberries. <laughs> not the purple straw. Not the purple berries. But. I ate the red berries. <laughs> Doesn't sound as good. No. What would your final words be? Yeah. A comment on, on Instagram. Our Instagram, our Facebook, 
Twitter. Twitter. Be interesting to see who or what you think your final words yeah. would be. Comment. And what did you what did you get the death penalty for? Yeah, what would you get the death penalty for and what would your last words be? And we'll share our favourite ones. Yes. But kids, always, always remember, remember, drink the Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid.